Oaks in that first quarter, six of eight for 59 yards, so he's looking good. But again, that first quarter kind of tough for Montana. It's the fourth game this year they haven't scored in the first quarter. And trying to get something here. Second quarter, they got good chance. It's Green. Green lowers the boom and runs right over. Number 22, Jordan Sen. And Green down inside the 10 yard line. You know, we talked about Lex running style. Justin here loves to run it as well. And he's very talented too. But he's more of a kind of right at your runner. His thighs are about as big as most guys' waist, and he'll run right over the top of you if you're not planted very firmly on your tackling position. I mean, literally, he'll run over the tackle. Now Oaks has got three wide to the left side. Heidelberger to his right. Looking left across the middle, wide open. Heidelberger's going to score. Touchdown, Montana Grizzlies. Great play here, Tom. They come underneath again, and we'll sure see uh, as the wide receivers on the left run everybody off. He comes back underneath, and he's wide open. Heidelberger scores his sixth touchdown of the season. Dan Carpenter puts it through, and the game is tied. Craig Oaks with his 13th touchdown throw of the year. Complete the number eight. And we got a ball game that's tied up now. Seven apiece. We are back after the nine yard touchdown pass. Uh, puts Montana into a tie at seven apiece with the Vikings just short of 50 seconds into this second quarter. All tied up. There's Bodiford along with Fuquay. Shorter kick this time, trying to pin the Vikings, and it goes out of bounds. And so that's going to give the Vikings good field position. That's something we've not seen a lot of where Montana's kicked the ball out of bounds this year. But uh, as you mentioned, that'll give the Vikings good field position on the penalty. Looks like the Grizz trying to change the strategy there. Well, a free kick out of bounds on a kicking team. Portland State has elected to take the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. Well, we heard from Rich Rose there for the first time. Nice to hear from Rich. Outstanding. Gives us a break. Plus, people don't want to hear us talk all the time. That's good to let it. I get enough emails about that anyway, right, Bob? There you go. 35-yard <laughs> line for the Vikings after the penalty. In the two-receiver set. High formation. The fullback, Kennett. In the game, that ball tipped and knocked down. That's Lance Spencer, got up and got a paw on it. Let's go back, take a look at that Montana touchdown one more time, Bob. Yeah, and again, uh, everybody runs off on the left side. They run straight into the end zone and Heidelberger comes back underneath and he is wide open. Then he does the rest on his own and takes a pretty good lick here. And then that shot's late, but it's too late because it's already a touchdown. Scoring drive brought to you by MontanaGrizzlies.com for all the latest scores and stats and all Grizz news on athletics at the University of Montana. Go to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Second and long, little flip up the middle. Here's Fouquet. And near first down yards, he's going to be a bit shy, up to about the 44. Yeah, I like this play, a little shuttle pass, uh, similar to a run, or a little bit of a draw play here, if you will, but a pass inside. And I like Fuquay's running style. He's a good back, and I think Montana, as you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, figured that he'd play quite a bit, even though uh, Ruben has been doing very well, too. Fuquay's got a hip injury. He played about 20 snaps versus NAU, and that hip started bothering him early in the year. Now a full house backfield with three backs, and they give to the fullback, Kennett, and on third and one, he has it. A late flag comes in, and this is going to be for extracurriculars, and we'll see who's the guilty party. This, these are the kind of flags that can go either way. That's who the official happened to catch with a late hit. That's a face mask. Face mask came in late. Well, they would have had first down yardage anyway, but now this will tack some on. Yeah, and you can see the Montana defense expected, uh, must have scouted that play in short yardage. 
Face mask, number 47 on the defense. We'll have five yards to the end of the run. First down. Yeah, you can see he just kind of grazed yep. it as he went through. Now, Fuque, uh, even playing with the injuries that he has, he's he comes in this ball game the second leading rusher in the conference. He's averaging 101 yards per game. Uh, although, as we said, last week, Ruben got the start and had more carries. So now first and 10, Montana defense trying to make a stop. Fuque has the corner. He's across the 40 and down inside the 35, finally pushed out of bounds the 31. Now Montana fans have seen him do this before. This play actually starts inside just off tackle and he kicks it out and nobody can catch up with him until he's well downfield. Fu Quay came into this ball game first among active players in one double A in all purpose yards. First in the nation among active players, just shy of 6,000 all purpose yards for his career. 18 yard pickup on that last carry. Out of the eye formation, play fake. And it's complete to the fullback, Kennett. And Kennett has a first down. Kennett is the second leading receiver in this, coming into the game for Portland State. The fullback uh, had 11 catches. That's his 12th catch of the year. They don't spread it around too much. Bottiford has a ton of catches. And then the fullback is number two. And he's a weapon out of the backfield to catch the ball. Well, this is Portland State football here. They, they get the run going, and then they play action off of it, and they get another big first down. And now they're in the red zone in great position to score. But this is where the Montana defense has really shined. We've talked about it all year. Uh, they give up some yards, but when they get down here, it seems they hit a switch or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, the guys make plays in the red zone. The Grizz trying to do that again right here. Fuque dancing up the middle, breaks free, and second effort, and keeps the legs churning, and it's a gain of nine on the tackle, Tyler Thomas, but it came eight yards deep. Yeah, Fuque again is the kind of back, if you don't wrap him up early, he's going to spring and hurt you bad. And that's what happens here. Nice lead block, and uh, they do not wrap him up at the line of scrimmage, and he springs out. And McIntyre had to play hustle just to catch up the tackle and before he scored. Second and short, and again with that three back look. One of the tight ends in the backfield. This time, Weiser's going to throw the end zone. It's a touchdown to Whitehead. Again, that's, that's Portland State football, Tom. They get the, the run going, run, run, run. And then they come off the run with play action. And Montana a little bit surprised by it. They, you know, there are some people in the area, but a nice execution by the Vikings. They uh, credit where credit's due on that drive. Whitehead's a guy that had some catches in last year's game against Montana. He came into this ball game with only five catches the whole season and one touchdown. So that's his sixth catch. Um, and a second score. Extra point is up, and it's through, and it's good. The Vikings take the lead, 14 to 7. 11:53 left here from PGE Park in the second quarter, and the Vikings retake the lead. 14 to 7, the score now after that seven-yard pass from Weiser to Adam Whitehead. The big tight end, number 84. Here's the kick, and Seegers from the five. Trying to cut it back. If he can get to the corner, he has a chance, but he slips and falls. May have run into his own man, but boy, there's a little bit of green over there, and you know LV's got the Jets to do it. Oh, had he gotten there, yeah, Coach he Huck, might still be running. Coach Houck's heart's probably out of his chest <laughs> on that. He sees a Ooh. player going backwards, even though everybody knows that follows Montana football, Levander can do that and right. get, break it for a touchdown. Here's a look at the scoring drive brought to you by MontanaGrizzlies.com. 65 yards, a well-executed drive that time for the Vikings. For all the stats on Grizz football and the rest of Grizz athletics, go to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Here's Lex Hilliard, and Hilliard wrapped up, and that time making the play, Trent Jackson, defensive end, the senior out of Vancouver, makes the stop for the Vikings. Well, we mentioned Chuck Jones, 6'4", 290. The other defensive tackle, Chris Berg, 6'2", 310. I mean, those guys are really tough up front, and uh, especially those guys right over the guards. They are just incredibly strong players. 
That front line for the Grizz, Jay Green, Chris Orwig, Jeff Marshall, the inside three with a big challenge today. Good block on the outside from Hilliard to give Oaks time. And it's knocked away at the last second. Play made by Jamal Abdullah. And Abdullah reaches back with the left hand to make the play. And Chris Berg, he's coming off, but he was also in on that big play of the hurry on Craig. Uh, he got his bell rung a little bit. He's holding himself coming off, but those guys up front, they don't want to overdo it, Tom, but they are incredible players. Uh, I can't imagine Montana's front's going to see better players than that at those positions. Well, Craig Oak said this week, uh, talking to him on Tuesday at practice, Oak said this is the best D-line we'll see all year. So, okay, third and long now for Montana. Ten yards to go. Oaks has got time. Flag down. Scrambling, scrambling. And now tackled from behind. And Craig Oaks brought down. There's a flag on the play. But the sack from behind comes from DJ Robinson, one of the backup linebackers. Okay, I'm going to call a personal foul and face mask here. I thought it was a hold initially, but it's going to be against Montana. I think it's going to be a clip. Personal foul, face mask on number 75 on the offense. It is refused. Fourth down. Good, good, good call there, Bob. Corey Proctor, the guilty party with hands to the face. And so Montana will have to kick it away. Brendan Frigno going to return the ball. Tim Walsh. Tyson Johnson from his own goal line. And another bad one. This one off the side of his foot again. It's been a tough day for a kid who's been so good all year long. And it's a flag. Now a flag comes in late, right at the sideline. We'll see what this is all about. Boy, the punt didn't go 10 yards. I mean, the last one didn't go, I think, three. This is about the same. It's going to be about six yard punt, Tom. Personal foul, number 57 for Portland on the return. We'll go 15 yards from the end of the kick. All right, here we go. First down. I didn't see exactly what Ryan Friesen did, but he's going to be flagged 15 yards for it, so that'll help the Grizzlies. 50 will take 15 yards whenever yeah. the ball's in. That, that's a big help. Instead of six yards, it's uh, you know 21. Five-yard punt that time for Johnson. So they got 20 out of it with the foul, but uh, still great field position for the Vikings. Just can't say enough about the job that Johnson's done all year for the Montana Grizzlies. Came in averaging over 43 yards per punt, but the last two, five yards and three yards, uh, just off the side of his foot. So now the Vikings at the 35. Kennett and Fuque. Weiser going to throw back to Fuque. Got a good block at the perimeter, up the sideline. Flag down, though. Flag down. And it's going to be against the Vikings. Yeah, I think it's a hold. I think I saw it. Coach Walsh is really fired up down there. But he doesn't like the call, but it was there. Uh, you could definitely see the jersey coming out. The coaches up here, we have a advantage of the coaches in the press box. They're upset about it, but yeah, it's going to come back. The Portland State coaches are just to our left and there's a glass window separating us. And I think one of them just about jumped out. On the offense, 10 yards for the spot of the foul. We'll repeat, first down. Well, 61 didn't do it because he made a great block, 65. but it was later, yeah, 65. They right call Peter St. John for the hold. And so it'll be first down from now the 34 yard line from the spot of the foul, so it's first and nine. For the Vikings. Joe Weiser, six of 11. So far here in the early going. Fuque cuts it back up. Play made by Michael Potts. Potts along with Kyle Ryan in on the tackle. And a short gain. 
you know that screen on the last play I believe you'll see a lot more of that and I think that's a great call against this Montana defense they are so quick that sometimes the screen will slow your defense down a little bit when they are out hustling you and probably are a faster unit on the field than your team so I, you know they scored on a screen earlier that was a big play that got called back but no doubt you'll see a lot more screen today. Grizzly show blitz. They come with it from the outside, and they go to Ferrigno. Ferrigno up the seam to the 10, down to the 8. Well, there's a, a case of the right call by the offensive coordinator for Portland State when a blitz is coming. Well, and because McIntyre blitzed, and it left a huge hole up the seam. Yeah, and it's really an outside screen, Tom, is what it is. A little play action here. Then he comes back outside screen, and the lineman you can see come downfield in another big play. So a first and goal, the ball just inside the 10 yard line. A gain of 21 yards. And they'll go single back. Ruben puts his head down inside the five. Portland State team comes in second in the Big Sky Conference in rushing. They rush for 185 yards per ball game, but this Montana defense, very good against the run, 118 yards given up that second. So the number two rush offense against the number two rush defense, it's a very intriguing matchup. Uh, it's gonna unfold before us here today, but the Vikings have thrown the ball a lot more effectively than I thought they'd be able to. And all, not a good passing offense. And I think it's working so well because their run has been pretty substantial. Ruben again, short of the goal line, it's going to set up a third and goal from about the one yard line. You know, they got great push there. They didn't score, but they picked up four real tough yards right at the heart of the Montana defense. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do that play again. They're bringing in their big guys here to get some extra strength in there. Back in comes Kenneth, the fullback, along with number 88. That's Tony Curtis, a tight end. Ferrigno and Botiford out of the game. So you're right, this is the, the big goal line type lineup with the three backs in the backfield. They're all in tight. They're going to go to the outside. Kenneth cuts it in. And the fullback, Alan Kenneth, scores his fifth touchdown of the year. Well, you can see they're real excited here. That was a straight T formation. You don't see a lot of straight T, but that was a beautiful run. The fullback picked his way and pretty much decided where to go. There's a Grizzly player down. There's a Grizz player down. And looks to be, uh, was look, looked to be in, in, in some pretty good pain. Training staff came out there immediately. Dennis Murphy, J.C. Wida, and staff. Can't get a number on it yet. Don't want to speculate to the extent of the injury or who the player is until we can see for sure. See the training staff for the Grizzlies. Dennis Murphy, J.C. Wida. See the good cutback by Kenneth there uh, on the touchdown. Look, he's gonna and now be okay. he gets up, and it's Allen Signs. It's Allen Signs, big number 99. Looked like they were looking at the, his left knee. And that's a great sign when they can get up and, and walk themselves off. Doesn't always mean that's 100% okay, but initially a good sign. Allen Signs had a great year, the junior defensive tackle. Part of that rotating defensive line scheme that keeps the guys fresh. They're so deep on the line. But after the touchdown from Kennett, now it's 20 to 7. And Azor trying to put it through to make it 21, and he does. So the Grizzlies now faced with a 14-point deficit. They've come from behind in the past. They did it two weeks ago. We are back, 21 to seven. After that last touchdown, that touchdown from Kennett, there's a fullback that's used quite a bit. We talked about his number of receptions this year, and that's his fifth rushing touchdown. So this is a team that uses the fullback. You don't see fullbacks used too much anymore, at least in the Big Sky Conference. Angling towards the sideline, trying to pin Seegers. He's trying to reverse field. 
It's got some blockers. There's a block from Chris Orwig on the outside. And good return from where he started, up to the 24-yard line. Looks like they had a return left on, and Levander just wanted to string it all the way out there and almost, almost got out the corner. Well, as we said, you know, talking to Rob Fennessy last night in the hotel, he said he wanted to throw deep. He thinks that they're going to have chances to throw deep, especially when they line up in that trips formation. Uh, when they line up in trips, he believes that it limits the blitz package that Portland State is able to run. And they're going to have to start going deep here uh, if things continue this way, being down 14. And stick on the ground this time. It's Hilliard. And nowhere to go well, on the, the left side. That's the tackle made by Trent Jackson, number 40. And that's sort of the key there is Montana's lack of success running the ball. Uh, I think, again, they're wise to stay on the tackles because the middle is just so strong. But they do have to keep, you know, move the ball by the run so the pass will be there for them, too. MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive that time for the Vikings. Five plays, 35 yards, the one-yard run from Kennett in a time of 2.57. Second and 10 for the Grizz. Colt Palmer, the man in motion. Montana gonna stay on the ground. Justin Green straight ahead. And a short gain. We'll call it a gain of two. That time, Joey King there, along with Chuck Jones, to make the stop for the Vikings. Green came into this ball game, 381 yards on the ground, four touchdowns but the Montana running game has been shut down. So far today for the Grizz, 15 carries and 21 yards rushing for the game. And that was no surprise coming in. I mean, they, they, they said it all week. It's gonna be tough to run against this team. Gonna have to throw to win this game. Oaks with a man on his leg and then throws it away. But he's going to be ruled down. He's ruled down. That was an incredible sight. Berg, 55, Chris Berg had Oaks' leg and couldn't do anything to bring him down. Craig just stood there and finally got it away, but he's ruled down by the back judge. And so it's a sack. Counts as a sack for Berg. Well, you're sort of glad that he whistled this dead because if you got a lineman with a guy's leg like this, he can twist that and put a knee out real quick. So good call by the official. So after the sack for Berg, Montana backed up deep. Tyson Johnson hasn't had a lot of luck today. Needs a good one here. That's a lot better. Good kick and a good bounce. So there you go. Good recovery there by Tyson Johnson, number 26. Let's take a look at the second quarter trivia question brought to you by Don Adson Ford. Staying in the political realm, as we will for all of today's questions, I believe. In 66, when the Grizz and the Vikings first played, we know who the president was. It was Lyndon B. Johnson from our first trivia, but who was the governor of Montana? We'll have the answer after this play. The Vikings up 21 to 7 now, 4.06 left here in the second quarter, 4.06. It's Fuque, and he's outside. This could be a big game. It's a foot race. Torrey Thomas catches up, and Torrey Thomas knocks him out of bounds. There's a flag down, however. There's a flag back at the 45, 46 yard line of Portland State, and it's a hold. It's a hold, so it's all coming back. That's a big one. That's there. a dodged <laughs> bullet by Montana fans because what a nice play for them down the sideline. But of course, if you're cheating, you're caught holding, that's going to give you an advantage. So this ball is going to come back from the point of the foul, and it'll help the Grizzlies a bunch. Holding, number 88 on the offense, 10 yards to the spot of the foul. Repeat, push down. The tight end, Tony Curtis. The guilty party has a 35-yard gain that was wiped out. One of the things that the Grizzlies need here, Tom, besides a good offensive scoring drive, is a big play on defense. A fumble, a fumble recovery, an interception, because right now the Vikings are having their way with the Grizz uh, on offense. And so that you really need that kind of play right now on defense. 
Weiser off play action. Oh boy, Montana almost stripped that ball out of there. Weiser was holding that ball out. Now a late flag comes in. I think it's going to be against the Vikings on a late hit. Yeah, it looks like McIntyre was clapping, so that indicates the Vikings are in violation. Lance Spencer made the play for the Grizzlies on Weiser. And now this flag is going to back up. See Spencer coming from his backside, trying to strip that ball out of there. Dead ball foul, personal foul, number 65. On the offense, it'll be 15 yards from the end of the run. Second down. You know, we talked a little bit about how maybe the week off, it's in my mind anyway, was, you know, caused the Grizzlies to be a little slow to start, a little rusty initially. But the other item that we haven't talked a lot about is how this game, you know, is the probably the season for the Vikings, and that happens every time the Montana team takes the field. Everybody wants to beat the Grizzlies, so they're going to play their best, and so far I think they are. Seven penalties for 56 yards against Portland State here in the first half. They've been flagged a lot. Complete across the middle. Catch made by Scott Weaver. And again, to bring up third and long. Let's take a look at that. Had a lot of excitement the last couple plays. Almost forgot about this tribute question. Was the answer to it. 66. Lyndon B. Johnson was president. Who was the governor of Montana, Bob? I would. Yeah, I was gonna. You were. I not. was gonna say A or B. I really <laughs> was. I really was. Okay. Okay. I, I remember Mr. Babcock. I was a young scoop, but I remember it. <laughs> Third and long for Portland State. This will be a big stop for the Grizz. Wise with all kinds of time dumps it off. And Montana gets the stop, and they call timeout. The Grizzlies call timeout immediately after Kennett was taken down. I think the timeout was a good move there. Kill the clock and uh, get a chance to score before half. That would really help the locker room situation for Coach Houck if they could put some points up here before half. Way to keep them in the game, Coming up at halftime, we're gonna have a local news update from our affiliates back in Montana. And uh, of course, highlights from the first half and the first half stats. And speaking of stats, so far the Montana offense, uh, 26 plays, just 81 yards of offense and two turnovers. So the Montana offense, I mean, obviously, they I mean they haven't done much. Uh, the, the Vikings defense has made the play so far. But as you said, the Grizzlies could really do themselves a favor uh, here to get a score before halftime. Well, they've mentioned that you know Portland State could just as easily be five and five and two, and you know have leading the conference or contending for a conference title, and you can see why. They're a talented group. Back to punt, Jason Daly. You know, they take a real short stance here on their punt. He's pretty close compared to where most punters line up. He'd look for a block opportunity, too. Daly gets it away. Good pressure from Jayton Simpson up the middle. Seegers. Laterals it back to J.R. Waller. Grizz trying to get something going off the trick play. And Waller, who's the hometown boy, looked to have some room for an instant, but the gap closed. And uh, still a decent gain. Montana pulls out a little trick there. I love it. That's a great play on a punt. You don't see a lot of trickery usually on punt return, but that was really nice. And they did a good job not causing a clip. You notice they raise their hands out on the corner so they don't get the clip call, but uh, that was a good play. From the 26. Montana looking to get something on the board. Six yard return off that uh, punt return by Seegers and Waller. Oaks across the middle, John Talmadge. His first catch of the game, and the big number two is wide open. And a first down for Montana. The ball will be spotted at the 47 clock, stops until the ball is set. 2.09 left to go, gain of 20 yards. Trips to the left side, Heidelberger 
with one-on-one -on -one coverage on the right. Oaks going deep. This is John Talmadge's favorite route, and you can see why. When he runs the flag route, he gets open every time. They're able to free him up. And again, Rob Fennessy talked about it. When they can go trips, he really believes that's where they can attack this secondary. And out of that trips formation, Talmadge with a gain of 32. Yeah, it was a nice play, and he did. He just kind of hit the seam there, and he was wide open. Craig did a nice job to get the ball in there. Screws offense. Turned the key or something, hit the switch there, throwing it down the field. Moving the chains. Oaks wants to go for the end zone, and caught but out of bounds. And the coverage that time provided by Odell Jackson. And... Uh, Jackson probably with pretty good coverage there in uh, trying to funnel Heidelberger towards the sideline. Yeah, Jefferson with a nice play on the ball, but the ball was outside overthrown just a bit. And the Grizzlies smelling it here with a chance to score just before half. And it really would be the shot in the arm they need to go into the locker room to get a touchdown here. So second and 10. Talmadge and Heidelberger, the wideouts. Palmer, the man in motion. He leads the way for Green. Good block from Jeff Marshall. Green still moving inside the 10 and close to a first down. Well, that's the way Justin loves to run. <laughs> He'll run right over you and uh, just carried a few folks with him. Uh, it's, you know, Montana fans are used to seeing that. The Portland State fans here in awe of this run. Watch it. Just off tackle, little lead block, and people trying to hang on to the train here. It's Jeff Marshall leading. The Marshall got through the hole, had nowhere to block, started looking around, and Green went right behind him. <laughs> but it's a big gain, and it is a first down. So it's first and 10 from just outside the 10. So the Grizz could get another first down. But they'd rather just put it in the end zone. Here's Hilliard. There's going to score. Boy, did the Grizz come down the field in a, in a flurry there. Yeah, that's the kind of team they are, and uh, they are just a great team when they get her going. Lex, uh, another great runner. We've talked about north and south, and he wastes no time getting into the end zone here, and again, it's just what they needed to try to regroup at half. Carpenter puts it through. Carpenter's perfect this season on extra points. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for Lex Hilliard. And he didn't have to make too many moves there. Got by Chuck Jones. And uh, good, good blocking. Those last two runs up front. The run by Green, then Hilliard for the score. And John Talmadge with a big hug. They know they're back closer now. 21 to 14. 10 yard touchdown run that time for Lex. Craig Oaks. Couple completions on that drive. Oaks 9 of 13 for 119 yards. And when he's had time, Craig has, has been on. Well, you can see why Rob Fennessy mentioned that Portland State was a very scary team, a scary game, and that they were quite talented. You were worried there that, you know, as a Montana contingent, that uh, the Grizzlies were getting too deep into a hole to bring it back. But with a minute to go here, now only down seven. That makes the picture a lot brighter. Well, that happened two weeks ago. I mean, they were down 10 nothing at the end of the first quarter in Cheney. And then an onside kick recovered by the Eagles. So that looked for all the world that the Eagles were really going to have a lead at halftime. But Montana able to come back there uh, and take the lead before half. And now within seven here. You don't think Bobby Halk would try an onside kick here? I doubt it. <laughs> High kick from Sloan, Fuquay from the five. And there's a flag down. Ball on the ground. Are they gonna rule him down? They're gonna rule him down. Yeah, Rich Rose comes in, the referee, and says that he was down, that Fuquay was down. So it's not gonna be a fumble, but there is a flag. There's gonna be a hold on the Vikings. Well, we mentioned a big play on defense. That would have been one there on the kick return, but it will, re possession will remain in the Vikings' hands, so just under a minute left. 
It'll be interesting to see what Coach Walsh does here if he tries to score and just runs Holy. out the clock. Number 36 on the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That penalty might help him make his decisions here about running the ball, but uh, otherwise it would have been interesting to see if he'd take a couple shots. 50 seconds left. In the half. Well, they've got three wide. They put it on the ground to Fuque. And he runs out of bounds, and that is a mental error there to run out of bounds. The Montana Grizzlies have two timeouts left, and they could feasibly try to stop the clock and get the ball back, at least give Levander Seegers a chance. And as we said, the Vikings coaches are right next to us, Bob, in the booth up here. And they were screaming and hollering in disbelief when Fu Kui just ran out of bounds. Kills the clock. Second and eight. Bobby Houck looks like he's ready to call timeout as soon as this play's over. Weiser throws it out of bounds. They won't have to call a timeout. This could turn out to be disaster for the Vikings this final 50 seconds. Yeah, 38 could... ticks left now, and on third and long, the Grizz are going to get this ball back uh, unless the Vikings can pick up eight yards. And it'll be interesting to see if the if they don't convert here, if Montana tries for a punt block or goes for a return. Vikings two of seven on third down so far today. Three wideouts, Montana with four down linemen. They're just going to rush four. And it's incomplete, nearly picked off. Fuqua got a hand on it. And Adam Hogue dove towards the ball and just about <laughs> scooped it up. The senior from Bozeman in the hunt. The Vikings are going to punt. Montana, holy cow. What a turn of events here in the last six minutes after the touchdown. And now this, they're going to get a chance. That could have been a... Big interception for Montana. Again, we'll see if they go for a block here or, or a return. This has been typical Portland State style this year. Play tough and then just give it away in a couple of minutes. Daly, a high kick. Lavander Seegers has to call for the fair catch, but Montana's going to have good position to start this final chance at a score before halftime. But that's been the story for Portland State. They dominate in many facets of the game for a good majority of it, 90%, and then they give it away in just a period of five minutes spread out over the game. And in the last five minutes, Montana has had a great drive, and then Portland State with a horrible series uh, that they just had inside their own 20. I mean, well, poor clock management, poor decisions by Fuque and Weiser. Well, we'll see if it results in some points here because Montana only needs about 25 or 30 yards to be in field goal position. Oaks to Heidelberger who slipped. Heidelberger was wide open and fell down. And it looked like Telmage was open down the left side. See if the coaches upstairs saw that and take a shot. That corner pattern here, Tom, that they were successful with earlier to Telmage might be a good call here as well and get out of bounds. 10 yards to go on second down. Craig Oaks with pressure coming, had to get it away. That time, uh, Noah Wright, number 92, brought some heat against Oaks, and he had forced Craig to make a decision and to throw it before he wanted to, so it'll be third down and 10. Good chance here for Montana. Got to get a couple. Got to get a couple completions. Yeah, two. Probably time for two or three plays. Got two timeouts. Yep, and definitely, uh, like I say, 20 yards near field goal position, maybe 30. Heidelberger, Hancock, and Seegers lined up in the stack trips formation. Here's Hilliard up the middle and across the 50-yard line, and it looks like the Grizz are going to let it run out. And that's going to be it. So Bobby Houck happy to go into halftime. Down seven. 21 to 14 is the score here at the half. Well, I don't 
you know, I don't think there's much question, Tom. There was some rust there. It took about a quarter and a half for Montana to get off from the week off, but it looks like they're they're rolling right now. Let's send it down to Dave Guffey, who's with Bobby Houck. Thanks, Tom. Bobby, two fumbles, two shake punts. You're still in the thick of this game. What? It's a cliche, the week off for you, the, the surface. I mean, the, the Grizz are not playing their kind of football game. No, we're not playing real well now, Guff. And I, I like the way our defense is fighting. They, they kept them out of the end zone twice on two really poor field positions. And then we, we caved and gave them a touchdown when we gave them the ball inside the 25. So uh, the defense is playing good right now. Despite the points on the board, we've kind of uh, put them in a hole at times. And uh, we need to quit doing that. I like the drive at the at the end of the half. I like the defense at the end of the half. I think we're getting things going here, and, and I'm looking for for more of that uh, to start the second half. Having a difficult time running the football, I think you kind of expected that. You also thought you could go deep. You did a couple times, and actually Heidelberger had a chance to score on that one play. So th they are vulnerable if you can if you can go deep on them occasionally. Well, they are. Uh, we've missed a couple of balls, and, and we've missed a couple of blocks at the point of attack, and uh, we need to get those things cleaned up. But I, you know, we're in striking distance. We're going to get the ball to start the second half, and I like where we are. Thanks. Best of luck in the second half, Bobby. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much. That's Dave Guffey, the third member of our crew. Uh, some technical difficulties. Couldn't see Coach out, but we heard him. And uh, that's what he's thinking right now. Montana down seven. We'll be back after this break. 